congratulations. You've made it to day five. Yesterday was a tough day. It was the white food challenge, taking out flour, salt, sugar, rice, everything that looks white. You know, we're so used to the good guy being in white and the bad guy being in black. Not necessarily the case when it comes to food. And today, we're going to be talking about this, this challenge with gluten. And maybe you're gluten insensitive and that's what's causing a lot of the problems that you've got with, with fibromyalgia. So Martin, like first of all, what is gluten? Uh, why is it a problem now? Wasn't a problem 50 years ago? Right. Well, what it is, it's a type of protein that's found in certain seeds, in grasses. So it's actually in wheat the most, but it's also in oats, rye, barley, and there's so people who have it quite seriously bad that they are cross-reacting with other foods as well they might be cross-reacting into rice which is also a grass and the really bad ones uh, can't even handle quinoa and and uh, who knows what else there are multiple grains so if you're lucky <laughs> you're you can eat it or at least you can manage it but if you're not you have to eliminate for sure wheat, and if, if it's worse, then all grains. Um, gluten as such causes the opening of the barrier in your digestive system, in your small intestine. It's, it's as, if it, as if it were like grass. If you, could, if you could visualize the lawn in your, I don't know, in your garden, in your front lawn, as long as the grass is long enough, it will mat under your feet and you will not get muddy. You will not touch the wet dirt, the brown ground. But if you wear it off, if you cut it short or if you thin it out, before you know it, you're starting to touch the bare ground. And what happens is the, the villi that are covering the small insides of the small intestine become shortened and uh, become separated. Anyway, the whole point is leaky gut develops. Leaky gut or permeable bowel is the cause of underdigested bits of protein getting through the barrier into your blood where your immune system now has to deal with it. And this is not funny because you're not supposed to have a bit of chicken or a bit of wheat or a bit of something else floating inside of you, in your blood system. It should be completely separated, fully digested, free form amino acids, like the individual building blocks. It would be sort of like, the, you see these characters here on this keyboard, each amino acid would be one of these. And from these, you build words and sentences. And a protein will be a string of I don't know, 20, 30, 40, all the way up to thousands of these characters strung together into whole paragraphs, which then become the, uh, the building blocks of life. Well, your body, just to give you an analogy, your body is supposed to be in English. Uh, if you eat a piece of chicken, that's like in Korean. Now what? It, it gets rejected, it doesn't get understood, the immune system has to fight it, and you have a problem. So the gluten has become one such common problem. I mentioned uh, yesterday that uh, Dr. Davis wrote his now famous book, Wheat Belly, in which he was citing all the different studies and the problems how it came about. We used to have He's calling you now. Yeah, he is. Sorry, guys. One of the we used to have wheat that was three feet tall, four feet tall. Now all we have is this 18-inch tall wheat, which is really easy for the farmers because it doesn't fall over, doesn't lay down. It's easy to harvest. <clears throat> However, the side effect is also is that the wheat gluten content has gone up from 6 to 7% to about 13. Um, the uh, agricultural 
industrial, I don't know what you call them, developers, engineers. We're so proud of this achievement. We have more protein for you, the most desirable thing. We have more protein. Well, look what's going on. The, uh, the level of intolerance is rising in the society quite quickly. The other thing that contributes is the invention of glyphosate, Roundup. Farmers have started using Roundup on the wheat itself. When, uh, when it's getting near harvest time, they actually put glyphosate on it, which causes the wheat to do two things. One is to to the seed, so there's a greater yield. And uh, the, the un unintended side effect is that you are now ingesting the, um, the, the chemical that makes your immune system more vulnerable. There's more and more trace, trace levels, not much, trace levels of this Roundup in foods we eat, but it's enough in its cumulative effect to cause significant digestive problems. My understanding of Roundup is its job is to kill insects and or kill uh, plants that aren't oh, supposed to be no, there. Plants. So plants. your Herbicide. flora inside you is plants or bacteria uh, and that sort of stuff. So it's designed to kill the stuff that's lining the inside of your intestines and your stomach and your colon and all the rest of it. So now all of a sudden you don't have that symbiotic stuff that's going on because they'll break down foods a certain way so that the body can then use it and you've got this whole uh, you got all these holes going through like Martin was saying where undigested proteins get into your body. Now your body has to clean that up and then you have reactions and that's the whole gluten. So what we want to know is we want to know what is your reaction? What happens when you stop the gluten? So no bread, no pastas, no baked foods. Do you feel better? Do you feel stronger? We want you to journal about all this sort of stuff, just like we've been talking about the white food and, and whether you're alkaline and whether you're acidic. You should be able to tell now, like, whoa, like I'm running off the wall and everything else. I can't sleep. Like, what did I eat? What was causing that? And you're realizing that these things are related. Unfortunately, most of them are not. Do it right. I mean, if you accidentally, you know, cut yourself with a knife and you have a little drop of blood coming down, you know right away, you put a bandage on it and, and you start healing. Unfortunately, with the stuff we stick in our mouth, oftentimes it could be hours later, it could be days later, it could be cumulative for months or years or decades. We don't know. But we want you to start being aware of what's going on. So the challenge is, can you do without bread, pasta, baked goods, all these things that are full of gluten for a day, and what happens? So what might be happening, Martin, as people go through this process? The most common reaction is sinus, like sinus infection, what you may think it's a sinus infection, which in fact could be a gluten reaction, drippy, post-nasal drip, uh, mucus reaction. And of course, then there's the chronic. We're talking to the fibromyalgia crowd, so it could be the body aches, it could be migraines, it could be back pain, it can be other allergic reactions. It's any one of those things. Unfortunately, it's not clear that you will know after one day. It would be ideal if you could go for a week or two. That's when it's really going to become obvious. Okay, good. So hopefully that gives you an idea of what the gluten challenge is about, what you have to do. Martin, do you have any last comments or tips before we uh, uh, roll this one up? Um, you know, there's. thankfully we do have all kinds of gluten-free foods out there. But unfortunately, for most people with fibromyalgia, it's really not an out because you may be having a carbohydrate problem. We'll talk about it tomorrow. So for now, we're just trying to eliminate the worst one, the gluten, which is the wheat, barley, rye, and oats. Well, oats by contamination, but just the breakfast cereals. 
It's only one day. It's 24 hours. Well, as I said, <laughs> we promise you an easy, but what we're trying to really do is suck you into our view of seeing the world as you need to find what makes you worse and eliminate it. If I told you that you had a rock in your shoe that's causing the pain and the, the hobbling that you're going through, you'd say, oh yeah, let's take that rock out of my shoe. Well, gluten could be that. It could be the rock in your digestive system. Let's see what happens when we take it out. Great. And if, if somebody has any questions or they're running into a little bit of a problem and they need a little more support than just by the way, make sure you put your comments down here, share and support everybody as we all go through this challenge. But uh, somebody that feels like they really need some help, what should they do, Martin? I'll give us a call. We're here. <laughs> I hope <laughs> we're still able to answer all the calls coming in. It's 1-866-543-3388. Great. Thanks for joining us, everybody. We're really proud of how far you've gone. This is day five, the gluten challenge. Tomorrow will be day six, and it'll be a whole new challenge. See you there. Make sure you leave some comments below. We want to support you.